feel it, Crawford. <laughs> Is this filtered? I don't know. What is he asking me? If it's filtered, Judge. It's, yes, is it it's filtered? filtered. Yes, it's filtered. I'm sorry. That is not filtered water. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Put what it do down. You, what do you put on unfiltered water? Tap water on the table for? That's it. That's it. I'm done. To welcome you to episode three, part two of the floridation of the humanity of human cat. <laughs> All right, and that's what it's going to come down to today in this this here episode today. We're going to have jurisdiction mm-hmm. of this here <laughs> government nice. pulling their strings mm-hmm. and their witchery, mm-hmm. their fabricated lies. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I said it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and you know what? We're gonna break down the truth. Break it down. Break it down. And we're gonna break down the truth. Amen. And we're gonna uh, damn right. Woo. Amen. Oh. <laughs> We've gotta protect our phony baloney job, gentlemen. We must do something about this immediately. Immediately, immediately. Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. Harumph. Watch your ass, indeed. He's eye on the ball, boys. We're back for episode three. Part two. Part two. Damn right. Yeah, it's it's been a minute. So feels good. Feels good to be back. Oh yeah, Poon's back. We were sans it's Poon. Been so long. <laughs> yeah. Almost forgot about me, huh? That's okay. Slightly. You were you were over overshadowed there by the operator. I know, he was he was And I'm back. Well you redeemed yourself with that intro. That was pretty nice. Well thank you. <laughs> I'm trying. I, I have to keep my seat, you know. This is this is uh you know, means a lot to me. All right, boys. Well, to finish this this fluoride beast off, how do you want to hit this? Well, we can try to do a recap from the last couple episodes or the last episode. I'm sorry. I guess we go to the industrial side, right? Yeah. Just as a as a as a quick aside. Fuck Frederick McKay. <laughs> and Harold Hodge. You said you were going to try with the fucks. Oh, so my bad. Bleep those out. Bleep those out. So back in the day, it started off with Frederick McKay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you listen to that first one, if not, go back and listen to it. Up and coming dentist in Colorado Springs. Noticed some weird, funky crap on people's teeth. In this long roundabout way, it's tied into Alcoa and the aluminum industry. I got better better material on that with The Fluoride Deception, which everybody should go watch. The Fluoride Deception was a book published in 2004 by Christopher Bryson, and since they made it into a short film, that movie starts off with uh, two scientists. Dr. William Henry, a chemist for the EPA, and Dr. Robert J. Carton, U.S. Army and EPA. Both of them, right off the bat, claimed that fluoride implementation was based on fraudulent science by Gerald Cox, a researcher from the Mellon Institute in Pittsburgh. And then he was influenced by Francis, Francis Frary. I don't know. It's, it's weird. There's so many different avenues to go down with this, this one topic. Everybody wants to start off with either toothpaste or, oh, it's natural in the water and it helps with, with the teeth, but nobody wants, no, and then you can kind of touch with Alcoa. Uh, we can get it right off right off the back with, with the, uh, the concentration camps, the gulags, the Nazis. Nah, I got nothing. Not a lot out there on that. Yeah, it's mostly a, it's mostly opinion. I can't find one quote of somebody saying that it was in their water. Like we actually watched people dump it in water. I, I there's a YouTube video of a guy doing it. We I don't know attach that to this episode somehow, and he's got a bag and it's a 
brown paper bag. He's dumping it in there. And he goes, oh, shrugs his shoulder. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I was like, well, you're a piece of shit for doing it. But that's enough. you can't find any of those when it comes to the, uh, or at least I haven't found them, when it comes to the Germans' use of them. Now you can tie sarin gas. And it's 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 you know has fluoride compounds and a bunch of Germans, or ex ex Nazis not Germans but ex Nazis you know scientists and whoever that made poison gas and shit. Now they all came over and assisted in one form or another with the water fluoridation. But it happening back there not so much. Yeah, but you yeah. could at least trace fluoride there with the sarin gas. Yeah, least. you can trace it there. They were right using right. it there. They're I mean obviously experimenting with it. You know what can it do? So yeah. I guess it's possible, but you can't prove it. Yeah, and everyone goes. Everyone goes. Oh, it makes you. They they fed it to the prisoners because it makes them docile and uh, and ignorant or stupid and lazy. And it's just if you don't feed anybody or give them water for days on end, they're going to be pretty docile. Yeah, there's no point in taking an extra step to fluoridate their water. Like you're Nazis, you don't give a shit. Yeah, I think right. at that point they're probably just you probably want experimentation yeah, or exactly. something like you're just, that. You're just testing on them. Anyways. Yeah, they were saying that they brought it over on somebody brought it over from. A, a, base in montana over there and they were talking about using it for water but i'm sure they were using it for all other kinds of shit too so you can't really pinpoint it the the not so much nazi connection the, the not so much nazi yeah connection. That, exactly. they did a damn good it's, job and everybody that was fluoridated is you know right, right then and there yeah right. no history when you know six feet under yeah. yeah but i mean as far as there just being nothing you can find people talking about it all day long but that's just someone's opinion you go oh yeah they did it well, okay. Where's the proof? You know, like yeah. there is no proof. It's just this guy said it enough times, or enough people have said it enough times that it just becomes fact. And even not, though, not good enough for me. Even though history doesn't exactly pinpoint the Nazis to using, you know, fluoridated water in the concentration camps. You know, the fact is they were experimenting with chemical warfare and sabotage and all this other stuff. And regardless, it was pretty bad with for what they were doing i'm sure that you're using it for all kinds of other nasty shit so but. yeah just to get that out of the way because there's yeah. nothing to it at least that i slash we could find no M- moving on moving on back back to the melanin institute well with... if anybody does come across it send it our way i'll yeah. send it oh, our yeah. definitely please if you do i on the yeah. ball gmail.com that's ball with two a's one l baller yeah <laughs> 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 anyways back back to the, the melanin institute and that's that's where Gerald J. Cox came from, who really pushed this through. the The Mellon Institute was a was a defender of the asbestos lobbyists and companies. They produced research for uh, the claims for uh, mesotheliomia that it didn't come from asbestos and it came from other people or other sources. That was your Ricky mesothelioma. Yeah. Now you said it right. What yeah. did I say? Mesotheliomia. Yeah. You, that oh, was you your Ricky. You threw in another syllable in there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I, I just went off of, yeah. uh, I went off of uh, just memory last time. It was, it's all good. There was one me for the first episode, so clip it in, <laughs> Bubs. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's where you know, Gerald Cox in 1939 quoted to say, "The present trend towards complete removal of fluoride from water and food may need some reversal." I know I said I was gonna easy on the fox, but fuck that guy. <laughs> I have a whole list of shit Some people in in your in your totally in your water or food or however you're getting it. That's 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 bad for you. One more, Dr. Edward Groth, senior scientist of Consumer Union. Between 1957 and 1968, fluoride was responsible for more damage claims against industry than all 20 nationally monitored air pollutants combined. That's just breathing it in. Here's a shit ton of accidents from 1972 to 1981 alone. That's usually from broker feeder valves or operator air. Schools being affected, fish kills going off from it actually didn't get accidentally getting out into the lakes and rivers. Symptoms included but not limited to. Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, low blood pressure, excessive sweating, heart attacks, cramping, chest pain, excessive salivation, muscle twitching, and if you have dialysis, you can expect to die. Just right off the bat. I mean, there's more. You got acne, uh, arterial calcification, arteriosclerosis, bone weakness, cognitive defects, lower IQs, diabetes, hypertension, bone cancer. 
iodine deficiencies, immune system complications, early puberty in girls, and the temporal mandibular joint disorder, also thyroid dysfunction. But hey, you'll have stronger teeth. Yeah, your teeth will be <laughs> cavity slash carry free. Yeah. Or diminished by a small amount. So when this guy's over here telling you that it needs some reversal, it doesn't. It needs the, comp- well, yeah, it needs some reversal. Fluoride layout needs reversal, not, you know, this present trend towards removing it. Fuck you, Gerald Cox. Which leads you over to Poon's man over here, Harold Hodge, in 1957, claimed that fluoride was safe at one part per million, and there's no health hazard just justifying the postponement of water fluoridation. You know what? Roll the clip. Dr. Harold Hodge, a distinguished toxicologist on the Rochester team, has carefully investigated the safety of fluoridation. Water. Well, to put it very simply, fluoride <clears throat> is safe. <clears throat> at one part per million. <clears throat> this brings us back to the uh, <clears throat> fundamental point. Fluoride is safe. And I think I can say in conclusion that there is no health hazard that justifies postponing water fluoridation. <clears throat> Bullshit. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Distinguished toxicologist Harold Hodge, chief toxicologist for the Manhattan Project, was a co-orchestrator of human radiation experiments where citizens in Rochester and Oak Ridge hospitals were injected with plutonium around 1945. Injected with plutonium. Like, unsuspecting people, too. They didn't know this was going on. Same guy, same guy that's telling you that there's no problem with with fluoridation is simultaneously, or not, maybe a little later on, but still. This was in 45. He says in 57 it's fine. We're going to we're going to take his word. I guess we have to, right? Eat a dick, Harold Hodge. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <that> guy. <laughs> so, one if you want more and more, Robert Kehoe con- conducted a study on beagles, the effects of subjugation of dogs to inhalation and ingestion of calcium fluoride in uh, April 13th, 1962. Without going into it, he basically just fed a bunch of beagles either fed them or made them breathe in uh, calcium fluoride for six days out of the week to replicate the working conditions back in the day of, of uh, mine workers or whoever the hell's making that uh, f- calcium phosphate, fluorophosphate, whatever the hell the Florida phosphate industry was doing. It's, it's basically to back them up. And then the results were uh, given to lawyers and committees against, you know, for, uh, against, you know, whatever, the removal of fluoride. Instead of doctors or aluminum workers. And these uh, dogs had massive lung damage, lymph node damage, and emphysema. Poor but dogs. let's not worry about that. More Just un- keep. More than likely, they probably got tumors from it, too. So. Oh, it's not the tumors. <laughs> 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 Someone's been working too long together. Oh, Did they man. ever check out all the workers that were working in the factory, the aluminum factory? Probably after it was too late or shut them up or whatever. Yeah, because they hid something, right? They didn't say everything about a study that they had. I think it was the Beagles, right? Yeah, it was the yeah. It's, they 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 exposed the beagles to it, but those the results weren't given to the workers or doctors. It was given to, to, to the lawyers, to, right? Yeah, they were given to lawyers and the and the uh, fluoride lawyer committee. Like, the, if they were given to doctors, then doctors could be like, "Oh, this is what the symptoms we should be looking out for." That would tell us it's fluoride poisoning, essentially. No, we're not, because that's going in the wrong direction for what they want. And I don't think it's so much like we're trying to dumb down the entire population as it is. We don't want to pay to get hazardous material hauled off. And anybody who claims to be damaged can't sue us because these doctors and legislation has said it's fine. Well, so not only that, fuck they, yourself. Made, they made the profit off it. Uh, not just, oh, well, we need yeah. to get rid of it, but hey, we can make a buck and, oh boy, did they. Follow the dollar, <clears throat> always. Well, and there's two different kinds, right? There's fluoride and there's water fluoridation. So would you be okay with just fluoride, which is doing it topically, using the toothpaste, you know, maybe the mouthwash? No. I mean, still wouldn't be okay look, with it. everybody's free to do whatever the fuck they want. Because I, like, I feel like, in my if, opinion, if it would be okay it, with if, just that. If you, you know? want to do it, that's fine. You know, if you want to put it fluoridated anywhere water, you want, that's cool with you. But don't, don't put it in the right? water because I can't, I don't know what water is fluoridated and what is not. Now I'm stuck to filtering out everything that I consume or touch. Yeah, because you don't know exactly the PPM yeah, of look, that fluoride that's in it. Like, remember uh, Mike Adams, he did that test? And that was on the nursery water? Yeah. I have that little bit right here if you want to hear that. Roll the clip. I'll show you the results here as they come up. And then we'll be able to 
to see. There we go. Wow. Two, over two parts per million is what this meter is saying. Over two parts per million. The flashing means it's over two because two is the detection limit of this meter. Now this product, this baby water product, says that it contains one part per million of fluoride, sodium fluoride. This meter is reading two. Uh, there might be some variation or this, who knows, maybe this meter is reading too much or maybe there's too much in there. We don't know for sure until we do more tests. But they both agree that there is sodium fluoride in this baby water product. And it is well known that sodium fluoride is an ingredient that can be used to make nerve gas. Nerve gas, boys. You want that in your water? Brings it right back. Not quite the Nazi connection we were looking and for. He was doing but... that in a sweet ass hazmat suit, remember? Yeah, your boy, the Health Ranger. <laughs> Fogging really, up the really put on a, in it. Yeah. He's <laughs> put on a show. But yeah, and that thing was bleaking as, or blinking. As far as I know, if it's like the, the hack chlorometers that we use, it may have a high and low setting. I don't know. But if it's a low setting and it reading more than 2.0, it'll just flash at you. Mm. If it's a high setting, it's more than 8.0, it'll just flash at you. So who knows what it really was reading, right? Could have been three, well, four. It's two point two point oh plus. Yeah. So might just be two point one. Doesn't matter. The bottle said one point oh for him, and it was double what it was labeled as. So are we going to trust them too? By the way, you're feeding that to your kid with formula. Child. This infant. Is like infant. infant. Yeah. Toddler. Yeah. Infant. Yeah. Making formula with that stuff. Yeah. Anyhow, my last one here is uh, the operator's buddy. Oh, God. Well, B&E himself. B Edward Bernays. B&E himself, Edward Bernays. Yep. Fuck that guy. Uh, to start it off. Uh, <laughs> From an operator's point of view. He was good at what he did. Just he was a shitty person. So there is that. That tends to happen. Uh, tobacco companies hired him to get women to start smoking cigarettes to double their sa their sales. And he labeled those as torches, as free torches of freedom. Look into that. Nice. There's a whole there's a whole thing behind it. He's also been attributed to bacon and eggs for the standard American diet. Before that, that was just like I want to say biscuit and gravy, uh, English muffin, maybe a little jam or preserve on it, a little boysenberry if it were me. Yeah. You know, maybe some coffee or tea or something. Like they didn't need to like load up on the the fat and carbs first thing in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Before that, it was a piece of toast with jam and a cup of coffee. Yeah. That was your standard. Yeah breakfast yeah and i'm not sure cowboy breakfast same deal they're okay. out on the range you get a cup of coffee and a piece of toast and I mean, a marble red yep unfiltered <laughs> yeah i don't know why i don't know who was linked to that or if he was just having fun like with his hairnet got hair nets pushed in if he was just testing his theory to get it to get it out there if he was i don't know just just, just working on his act huh. don't know was it good like, actor yeah but where this all comes from is uh, the Florida phosphate industry was using uh, or was discharging uh, fluoride out into the atmosphere and surrounding communities were being poisoned from this industrial waste. And then yeah, it all it all it all that all ties back of, of why the, the the fluoride committee and the lawyers and everybody were were getting all the info and they didn't want it essentially or didn't let it get out to the people it was harming because they don't want to pay out lawsuits. They'd rather sell it to somebody rather than pay to get it hauled off you, you you're, you're killing two stones with one birds here bubs so but one thing we can say for certain about fluoride is if you talk about it in a professional manner it will screw up your career indefinitely oh yeah can doctor, somebody get fired for that oh yeah well dr william marcus did but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about george dr george walbolt first the first physician to warn of uh, penicillin's deadly side effects to some people. He also was attributed to uh, finding out that smoking can lead to emphysema. After you know, oh that, well that, yeah, that, you know, emphysema. That's gonna, that's a nice one to get. But he, he figured out that his, his patients had a bunch of illnesses, and he and he ran a shit ton of tests on them and figured out it was long expo long, low fluoride exposure. You know, low fluoride exposure over a long time. <laughs> I love all this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it all, like you just said, it all ties into itself. You know? I mean. But no one's ever heard of him because he got screwed over. Another guy, Dr. William Marcus, a former senior science advisor for the EPA Office of Water, was fired. And here's why. Roll the clip. 
where laboratory animals were given fluoride, uh, he said that those results had been gerrymandered, that in fact, the equivocal verdict that fluoride was a carcinogen ought to have been much stronger. He said that uh, fluoride given to rats had produced bone cancer and liver cancer, and that those results had been doctored to make it look as though fluoride hadn't caused as much cancer. I've been in the toxicology business looking at studies of this nature for nearly 25 years. And I've never seen that. Never ever seen where every single endpoint that was a cancer endpoint had been downgraded. I'd seen one or two endpoints argued over, usually on a definition of what is a cancer in that particular tissue. But I've never seen every one of them downgraded. I found that very suspicious. Marcus was fired. Dr. William Marcus was fired, and a federal judge ruled that Marcus was fired because of his outspoken opposition to fluoride. Federal judge said it. I don't know which one, but somebody else said it, so I'm going to re say it. You know, <laughs> worked for the concentration camp, man. <laughs> yeah, guy was, guy, <laughs> guy was fired. And, you know, and the guy said, oh, yeah, hey. The judge said, yeah, it was because you ran your, your fucking mouth about fluoride. Dummy. And he worked for the EPA, so they don't care. Whether it's you or their own, whatever whatever keeps that, I don't know. Ball turning. Nice one. There it is. He's Let's been practicing. Yeah, he's right. I've been waiting for it all episode. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I throw it in? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got as far as a uh, recap slash conclusion to uh, why it's here. I guess we could take it to the old calcification of the pineal gland. Well, There's I was going to ask Ben a particular question indeed. <coughs> you oh, would you, say that... Did you use my name alive on the You would say that fluoridated right. water... You got to put yourself out there like Mark okay. Passio God, says. Don't, don't hide behind a mask, Ben. Episode 222. <laughs> You're hiding behind a mask. Yeah, he really lit that fire oh. under your ass, didn't he? <laughs> Why would you listen to him walk when you could smell that fear? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was more of a shot. Like, You're out of your fucking <laughs> gourd. Oh, this is fucking awesome, man. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. So you would say, kind sir, mm -hmm. fluoridated water is a neurotoxin. You might say correct, Mr. Benetron. Uh, yeah. I? Mr. Operator. Mm -hmm. Well, as you should know, it does not need to be oral ingested, correct? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, if it's in water, you absorb it, so. Yes, yes, and indeed, sir, <laughs> yes. Gets into your skin. Gets into your brain waves and your frequencies, mm -hmm. and of course the pineal gland. The pineal. Yeah. We'd like to talk about that one this evening here. Yes, sir. I tried to do that as best as I could. So. That was good. Right, good. <laughs> you brought it back. This time it was live too. That's good. Yeah, live in the yeah. happening. So Just here, I'll <clears throat> what is the pineal gland? Yeah, let's throw in. All right, we can choose from either the knowledge is power, or we could do the Ben Fox or Fuchs. Whatever his name is. It's Fuchs, but I like Fox. <laughs> I like Fox. We'll, we'll throw that one in here. No fucks given around here. All right, here we go. Roll the clip. Pineal gland is the gland that's responsible for higher consciousness. So-called third eye. Exactly. Your pineal gland is your third eye. And it, very interestingly, it had been called your third eye by ancient people. But when they found the pineal gland and started to examine it, they actually found eye tissue in the pineal gland because the pineal gland is sensitive to light. Now, only God knows what a light-sensitive gland is doing fat dab in the middle of your brain. The point is it is sensitive to light. and It's involved in serotonin and melatonin metabolism. These are two very important uh, neurotransmitters for higher consciousness. In any case, the pineal gland, which is responsible for the process of melatonin and serotonin is also very, very, very sensitive to fluoride. In fact, the highest concentrations of fluoride in the body are found in this absolutely critical gland that's important for higher consciousness. Now, fluoride is a classic dumbing agent, and it's the active ingredient in Prozac and a lot of other serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what is the pineal gland, right? The pineal is a pea-sized pie cone-shaped gland located in the middle bottom of your brain. Uh, hemispheres uh, just behind the top of the brow so I mean dead center your third eye so to speak roughly uh, the Egyptian eye of Horus contains the pineal gland embedded within otherwise known by the Hindus as the Anja chakra or Anja I'm not sure exactly sixth chakra right yeah the sixth chakra of the third eye um, 
and by Rene Des- Descartes, a principal Descartes? Descartes. Yeah, Rene Descartes. 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 As a Same principal French, seat man. of the soul, uh, the pineal appears to hold uh, unlocked potential that uh, ancients seemed well aware of, and is seen as a key to brain health, awareness, and general wellness. So it is pretty weird that the pineal gland is obviously really calcified by fluoride, right? Yeah, it's directly. I mean, you've seen some of those pictures. That just not it go, natural. It goes right? like directly to it. Yeah, I mean, well, it, I think it's an MRI, right? Yeah, you take an MRI, MRIs, and then you see that yeah. glowing mm-hmm. calcified There's, pineal gland right in the center. You can see it from the backside too, and it looks bigger because I don't know, probably the light aspect of it. Um, there's allegedly there's supposed to be a lot of uh, relativity towards light, how we see things through our retina and things like that. Yeah, it's the the um, they say Directly that there's ties to it. Was it pinealocytes? I think so. the The pineal gland is pretty much almost identical to the retina of your eye. Mm-hmm. But in in the retina of your eye, there's these little crystals that are just floating in water. That's how we see the color. And the pineal gland has the exact same thing. So that's right. you know that's pretty weird, you know. And we're obviously not using it to our our full potential. So what if that thing was decalcified? I, mean, well, I guess we could start with that. So how do you start to decalcify it? There's certain foods you could eat. I'm sure. Right? <clears throat> um, yeah, there's. Uh, well, we got some dietary items. Yeah, there's quite a few, actually. I would start out with not consuming fluoride. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good start. Water, um, foods, pills. It helps. Um, you don't have to, <laughs> but it sure does help. Yeah, that's probably number one. And then, you know, diet items, you can do a raw cacao, anything, you know. Um, cacao! Uh, that was used by shamans. Um could always trust the shaman. Yeah, shaman's always definitely the route to go. Unless they call themselves a shaman. I don't know. Garlic, uh, oregano oil, apple cider vinegar. Oh, there it is. See? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't buy it. I don't buy it. MSM. What's MSM? MSM. What's MSM? I'm not sure. I don't know either. I'm not. I was just ah, don't worry. Fucking keep Google keep it. going. MSM. I'll Google it. I'll duck, duck, go it. Uh, you might want to be careful Googling that. that that's an air drug some... name for <laughs> methylene. Way to go. You just got yourself put on a watch list. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, and cilantro is good too, right? Cilantro pulls the metals out of your body. MSM yeah, supplement, the first thing to come up on Duck, Duck, Go. Not as Chamomile, sponsor. pine bark, lavender bud, wild indigo bark, violet, licorice, ginseng. Uh, the, there's a couple other ones that I saw. was like ginger, stuff like that. But and the, the most important one that you were talking to me about, right, is the... It's the turmeric or turmeric or whatever it is, but turmeric. They say that... I like how this guy says it the best. 40% of the turmeric enters into your skin when you rub it. For example, if you rub 100 gram turmeric on your skin, 40 gram penetrates and gets into your system. The penetration rate is too high. It's a complete antidote for fluoride. Damn right. You hear that? Antidote for fluoride fucking antidote you wrap it on your head hey this guy said 10 days for someone our age you know if you're in your 40s or something like that you know maybe a couple weeks month maybe mm-hmm. but all you got to do is it's not the actual powder because you put powder in your food you know the turmeric powder but you take you take it uh from the root the actual root itself and then grind it on a stone or something like that and take the uh root and put that on your forehead and then uh, just before you go to bed and within 10 days, your your pineal gland should be completely de- decalcified altogether. That'd be interesting to see. And it says 40% of humans in America have a calcified pineal gland, too. 40%. You got 40? I got 60. You got 60? I got 60. Whew. That's even worse. And, and tumors are rare, supposedly, um, to 50 to 70%. Are uh, germinimas that arise from sequestered embryonic uh, germ cells? Preach it, player. I'm over here today. CBT, oh no, CBCT scans reveal the pineal gland can become calcified, and pineal gland cysts or calcifications may be found up to 60% of people. And so, I forgot what website. And that's fluoride not, isn't but, the only thing that calcifies the pineal gland, right? I'm sure there's other things out yeah. there not as you know direct but you add that on top of your 
fluoride. Well, I mean, if that's in your blood, they say that more blood is going through the pineal gland than the heart itself, you know? And so if, if it's filtering that much through it, you know, that's just, I mean, I don't know what targets it more than fluoride. I think fluoride is actually the, the most. I don't know. It's, it's, as from what I heard, it's, just, it's, Directly, a hard, yeah. it's hard to go from the blood to the brain. And there's very few things that make that leap. And I think aluminum might be another one of those. Aluminum and is, And that's yeah. why, you know, it's a contributor to Alzheimer's. Well, it says that calcify, uh, calcification of the pineal gland is associated with uh, corpora arenacea, also known as the brain, as brain sand. Oh, the old brain sand. I got not, stuck in brain sand once. Not good. And <laughs> yeah. someone come tow me out. <laughs> did, you, did you use your shirt to put under the tire or... You know, is it the other one? Uh, block no, I, of took, wood. I took a block of wood, yeah, <laughs> inside into the rim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, any port in a storm, whatever it takes to get out. Does that work? Any port in a storm? It doesn't matter. Let's move on. <laughs> but uh, basically, another keynote that I wanted to bring up. Um, obviously, it you know, it's our nighttime. It secretes all the melatonin in our brain. But um, in our lower vertebrae's the pineal gland is directly photosensitive and what photosensitive means is having a chemical electrical or response to or other response to light yeah that's what i was saying earlier about the same rods and cones of the retina right so it sees color but it's being calcified so we're not i don't think we're using to, it at all no. i mean if i mean we're we are using it you know because of our sleep cycles the circadian rhythm but still it's not working to its full capacity no and we're not working and it's not in modern history or modern medicine to make it something yeah. something to talk most about you don't go to your doctor and then they just oh how's your pineal gland doing yeah you know what i mean <laughs> hey you get any cancer yet <laughs> <laughs> no hey if yeah if, are you suffering from moderate or severe plaque psoriasis <laughs> oh, yeah. talk to your doctor what the fuck <laughs> wouldn't my doctor know i mean yeah, don't see a doctor that's the best <laughs> yeah. way to go about things so, but this turmeric stuff is supposed to be really good. It's like the shit. And when you <laughs> use a lot of black pepper, um, it, it is the shit. It enhances it like by a couple hundred times, I guess. You use pepper with it too. Not like pepper on your forehead, but when you eat it and stuff like that. And it's in all kinds of stuff. They put it in a curry. Uh, so it's, it's pretty awesome. But uh, it's definitely the cure for the uh, pile. pile. The complete cure for this problem. Yeah, and I think one of the most important things is, you know, they say that the pineal gland may produce DMT, right? You know, that'll kind of take us into our next episode, right? We're going to be talking about psychedelics yeah. in the next yeah. episode. I don't know if that's, is, is that where DMT comes from? I don't know. I think our pineal I'm gland not, creates it. Isn't there some uh, breathing exercises where it's concentrated in the lungs and that's what, we're, you know, you can do it naturally oh, yeah. through, uh, you know, certain breathing exercises. Meditations and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know if it comes from there. Maybe that's just the uh, the receptor, right? Like, yeah, it's it's your eye, I guess, and the door is closed. Oh, and maybe the the lungs are making the DMT key. What? Who knows? We'll I think some. I think all of this talk is segueing into a uh, hallucinogenic episode here. Uh, so. Maybe let's not give too much away. Oh, can't let's, wait to throw some Terrence McKenna on here. Oh. But but what do people do about the fluoride that may or may not be in their water? You can filter it. Did you find any filters? Oh, there's do? plenty of things you can do. Yeah, oh, they're filters. expensive, though, right? Yeah, yeah, not so. Well, what's expensive? How expensive is health? Uh, it's you know, more. if you're talking to a doctor and they go, well, we can cut it out or do some chemo. Well, isn't that expensive? Hmm, well, <laughs> how expensive is your life? Yeah. That's Good when point. you really put a price on it. Yeah, oh boy. Let me tell you. So what do we do there? You can filter your water. People do like uh, by the water. Water softener ain't gonna fucking help anything. It's just <laughs> no. let's get that one right off the bat. Water softener just takes your uh, calcium, magnesium, and switches it to sodium and potassium to make softer water. Well, not, at least you won't get have water here. spots anymore, right? Yeah, well, except for That's those great. on your pineal gland. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got those. You're gonna spot that right out. <laughs> yeah. So just right off the bat, no water softeners don't help. No, you can't boil the water. This isn't some biological disease that dies at a certain temperature. Well, this is a real dark cloud. It's, yeah, well, it's it, gets, it, it gets better. <laughs> and um, I don't know. 
boiling your water, yes, that, that, that'll lead over to distilling your own water, but who the hell distills their own water unless you're taking your, your shine rig for a water run? Probably not. You can buy tabletop distillers, and yes, you can distill the water because God. the fluoride will stay behind. God, but that'd be some good fucking water, wouldn't it? Fluoride shine? Fire water. Oh. My, my people oh. called it fire water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyhow, jeez. <laughs> But you can distill it if you want to buy a tabletop distiller. They're eh, I don't know, kind of expensive. Some of the ones that use filters, too, are kind of whack. I don't know. There's, you can't, well, you can filter it out, but your standard charcoal filter doesn't fil- it'll filter. No. Chlorine. Fridge filter isn't going to do yeah, it. Yeah, fridge no. filter will get rid of your chlorine. No. And some other non nuisance. Well, chlorine's still a nuisance. You know, that'll yeah, but you get your right. algae oh. smells and all that. Yeah, it'll get rid of yeah. taste and odor, all your yeah. secondary aesthetics there. That'll all go out with a, just a standard like two-stage filter you can do reverse osmosis can be somewhat expensive but not a bad route to go it can remove up to like 96 percent of your uh fluoride in, in in the water there which is still fine i mean like where we live we did this we looked at our ccr a while back our consumer confidence report and we had a a low and a high of 0.8 low 1.2 high if i'm not mistaken and that's natural because we don't. I used to work here. We don't fluoridate the water, unless something's changed in the last few years. They don't flu. That's just what's naturally there. And that's just in the water. That's that could be separate pockets around. You know, yeah. the entire city. And yet, sure. F- why not remove that? Sure, remove any crap that's not supposed to be there. And there's a whole other topic you can get on on distilled water, whether it strips the nutrients out and then how to remineralize your own water. I don't. Well, We'll do that later. Do a whole other mm-hmm. drinkable water podcast. But what I've <laughs> essentially found it's out, like your uh, your uh, Brita filter, your Pure filter, or the Life Straws, also don't get rid of uh, uh, fluoride. They'll, inc- they'll improve your water taste. Yeah, it's all. They'll get rid the of taste. chlorine, but not fluoride. Fluoride's a fluoride's a fickle bitch. All right. Mm-hmm. She's she's got your uh, she's got your house key. You tore her to leave. She's not leaving. You know. <laughs> Comes in through the attic. She's got your yeah. pineal gland. You think you got her gone, and yet there's a bunch of money racking up on your gas card. Shit, forgot to cancel that one. You know <laughs> that's fluoride. You're and and I'm not. I want. I don't have one of these, but I want one of these. And this is essentially where it's going. Is 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 the Berkey countertop fluoride filter, or it's Berkey? But you you, you, you. you got to pay extra for the fluoride filter cartridge and, and I, you gotta clean two, those motherfuckers oh, well, that'll too. get rid of like 33 percent or 90 93 percent oh nice uh and it's using activated alumina Ooh, well, how much does that whole system cost do you know that tabletop johnny right there if you go on anywhere it redirects you right back to amazon for like 637 bucks no that's not too bad not honestly that's not, not too bad, bad. is no, your life that's 600 that's, bucks that's yeah. tabletop only it definitely well and there's a couple so. of places out there that are doing in-home ro systems yeah that's they're, for they're for they're roughly pricey. the roughly the same price i mean it's going to be a little bit more but you're getting rid of a lot more too yeah yeah it depends yeah. on how big your house is how many of your faucets are going to be hooked up to it but the, the berkey filter is cool if you're just drinking it because you got to think if you're you have like high fluoride coming in your house through the, your municipality there. Now you're not drinking it, sure, but you're bathing in it. That's the worst. And then part. you're steaming yourself. What do you stand underneath? And drinking it, the you're shower head, it, but yeah, and it's going yeah. directly on top of your head. That's fine. It's absorbing through your skin and lungs you know. through a shower alone. So your tabletop <coughs> Berkey filter isn't the best way to go if you're looking for like an, an all-encompassing yeah, you want protection. To all of it. So back to the to the RO, you'd you'd want to go RO. I mean, my house, I got nothing. I got a sink, fridge, and two showers. Really one shower. The first one broke. So it's just a bath <laughs> and then a tub. A tub and a shower. And I'm honestly, not worried about my toilet water more for being piping for just to get it to those specific locations yeah, than you would exactly. the actual unit. But, the, you know, as far as solutions go, there are some out there. If you just want to drink it and not worried about bathing in it, Berkey. Uh, any kind of RO system will get rid of it. As a whole house one, you don't. But that's the thing. You don't need to be running RO to your car to wash it, or any outside hose bibs. Yeah, or are you going to be running RO to worried about you know, your garden, back you know? sprinklers, or something like that? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Then now you just put an extra wear on your RO system. But there is light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah, could so. be. Well, I think that 
about wraps it up. That was actually a pretty good episode. I was surprised by that. Yeah, we not graced bad. through that one and very organized. So what's our next episode going to be about, Austin? About drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically psychedelics. <laughs> Who knows where we're going to go? Probably mushrooms, probably DMT, all that good stuff. And we wanted to say another quick thank you to Spiral. We use another one of their older songs. This one's called Avalanche, right, Ben? I believe so. Avalanche, yeah. So thank you, Spiral. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you, Spiral. And hope you all have a good day, evening, whatever it is. Roll that outro. This is what it is, okay? I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Cheeky.